it is really important that everybody has a device because without that you exclude young people from learning. One of the biggest challenges for the use of devices in any lesson is if you don't have enough for one per child. It's then how do you differentiate, how do you group the children and actually it presents barriers then for teachers to deliver lessons enabled by the use of, of personal devices. What's great about the scheme through Birmingham eLearning Foundation is that it does enable every child to access that technology on a lesson by lesson, day by day basis. And so they truly be embraced to enhance learning. All of our projects are, are built around the one-to-one -one model. We are absolutely adamant that, that the big gains are to be made by children having unique access and, and solitary access to the device, both in the school and at home. Staff feel confident that if they plan a lesson that enables the use of this technology, everybody will access that lesson. They won't have to worry about whether some will have it and some won't. So last lesson we discussed what gene therapy was and the different stages. So this lesson is a construct phase where they're going away using the Play-Doh, they love using Play-Doh, um, to make the different stages of gene therapy and then they're going to annotate it and explain each stage using our motion and then what we're going to do, we're going to collate it all together and project it on the board and to share it with the rest of the class. We can do that if you want. Yeah, because Some people learn visually and so it's excellent for them, so they'll see it and then they'll be like, um, okay, so this happens, but before this happens, this has to happen, and then this is the final product. And it's all just nicely put together in one little piece. They could go home and look through it again, so when it comes to revision, it's a lot easier. It's quite creative. In other lessons, they often will tell me to repeat things so they could catch you on the iPad or take pictures of demonstrations when they're doing practical to capture the different steps which they need to write about later on. Uh, they have access to student books on there, they have access to all the notes, lectures, so it helps them to be a bit more independent. Compared to my old school, I am a better teacher here because I have more resources and with the iPads uh, I could extend the students' um, knowledge and understanding outside the classroom rather than just inside the classroom. They're taking risks all the time, trying different things out with those devices, but that comes from the culture that we're building. Ultimately, they become better teachers. No doubt about that, and ultimately our students are better learners. The use of iPads across AUEA is absolutely brilliant. What I do when I start a, a group from teaching, I get them to either go on to A-level GCSE, BTEC or City and Guilds website and download the actual specification as a PDF into their iBooks so they can refer to that um, at any point. This includes dust. They walk in a room with their iPad. They can be on the bus on the way in, on the train on the way in, or even at home, and they've always got access to it. And, um, yeah, we can start machining. What they're doing is making a, a video of themselves around a health and safety point of view. They'll sit down at some point and peer review each other's videos around the success criteria of what they had to do around the health and safety issues. So I've been using the iPads to create a film that's going to help me revise later on. So at the weekend, because I don't have access to all this machinery and stuff like that, I can just look at my iPad, watch it back and understand what I need to. I've used the iPads a bit before like this and yeah, it can be extremely useful for stuff like this. The thing with chemistry in particular is it's very difficult to visualise atoms and to visualise a lot of reactions that are happening generally. A lot of students find chemistry difficult in particular, purely because of the fact that they can't visualise. What the iPad does is it helps to bring a sense of realism. It just becomes easy for the students then to visualise what's going on. It makes life a lot easier when it comes to delivering very, very difficult topics where the kids can't really have a sense of understanding of what exactly fits where. It just makes life a lot easier. Looking at the elements and um, the proton numbers and everything inside the periodic table, you can click on an element and it will tell you more about it, whereas if you didn't have an iPad, you, you just have to ask the teacher. It's more enjoyable as well because you have your own personal learning, like you have your headphones, like nobody will disturb you. and. Um, 
You're doing everything on your own as well. Abdi, can we, can we start off with you? The students recently completed a mock exam and what we're doing is going back and revisiting some of the answers. And I've been giving them current kind of articles. So for example, the article that I downloaded from the Sunday Times was only last week. Instantly, the students have got access to that. They've got a record of it, they can keep it and download it into iBooks on their iPad so they can go away from lesson and kind of deepen the learning, which is fantastic for me. We're going through an exam question and we're looking at an article to find the answers right, we'll to find at the same time. Well. We're all sharing different parts yeah. of our answers, so yeah. Sarah will pull up our answers on the board and then we'll put it all together as a final answer. Right, guys, if, if you could um, just finish off the sentence. Now I've started using the iPad, you don't really see life without it because it's really speeded up everything, made it faster, so if, if we didn't have the iPad it would, it would be a lot slower. Some are looking to get into the right university, some will look for the best apprenticeship, uh, some of them are just looking to build up a skill set to enter the job market. We know that progress is being made, so this charitable way forward, we know it works because it has worked for 10 years. And there's something very strong about community and inclusiveness. It's about pushing boundaries in the classroom, about pedagogy, and you believe in its value to pedagogy. Then you know, you should do it because, you know, schools that fight technology and personal devices are fighting a losing battle, quite frankly. You know, they're here to stay. It is, it's the future, you know. Birmingham eLearning Foundation is a charity and if we can help you wherever you are, we can be reached at www.belf.org.uk.